So the Xbox and Bethesda showcase was this week and I have some mixed feelings. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, Ryan here. Thank you so much for being here today. So the Xbox and Bethesda showcase was this week and I've had a couple of days to marinate on my feelings about it. While I was watching the show, I felt a little mm, underwhelmed while I was watching the show until Starfield took the stage. Uh, there was a spot there in the middle that just really dragged on and I was just like, man, this is going to be bad if they don't have some big surprises coming. But at the end of it, I was happy enough with Starfield where I thought that the show was good or in almost great, but not quite amazing. So overall, I think the term mixed emotions pretty much sums up how I felt about this showcase. They were really on the edge of having a great to amazing show. If they would just had a couple of big surprise announcements, some CGI trailers or some things that people weren't expecting that could be a little bit further out. But I thought that Xbox fans generally should have a lot to be excited about after watching this show. Other than the lack of first party titles coming in 2022, there is a good reason to stay subscribed to Xbox Game Pass and you have a lot of things to look forward to, especially in the early part of 2023. The show was really lacking a couple of really big surprise announcements that I think was um, held back because of their rule that they were only going to be showing things that were 12 months out except for uh, the Kojima announcement. I think that everything they showed was going to be released within a 12 month window or they're planning to release it in a 12 month window. And I think that kind of hurt the show a bit in my opinion. Uh, I wanted to go over everything that uh, stood out to me during the show and highlight some of the positive stuff. Then at the end of the video, we'll talk about some of the negative stuff and everything that was missing from this show. So let's get started. So let's just go down through the show in the order of things that stood out to me. I'm gonna skip the stuff that I didn't really like or wasn't very memorable uh, to me anyway. And before we jump in, if you haven't already, I would highly recommend you go back and watch this showcase in 4K uh, of the video that Xbox uploaded. It's definitely worth it. It looks so much better than the live stream. The show kicked off with Redfall, a game that we really didn't know much about. We got a CGI trailer last year uh, showing that this game is going to be about vampire hunting. The town is overrun with these magical vampires. It has a really cool attitude, a really cool aesthetic in my opinion. I love arcane games. I loved Prey. It was Prey was so amazing. If you haven't played Prey, play that game please. Dishonored is amazing. I just I just love their take on the open world genre and their world building and their RPG mechanics and hopefully that's that stuff carries over into this game. Um, this game looked great in my opinion. It's colorful, it's fun. Um, it could be scary at times I'm, I'm assuming. Um, the vampires look very menacing, and I love the powers that the characters are showcasing. One thing I'm interested in seeing more of is the character customization. I'm hoping that we can customize these characters a little bit more to our liking, especially if we're going to be playing co-op with other people. I would really like to mold these characters uh, to look a certain way that I like and to play a certain way that I like. So overall, happy with the Redfall showing. It looked great in the 4K version that I watched. Um, interested to see more, and it's definitely a game that I'm going to be playing, especially since the developer um, emphasized that this is a single player game with co-op as an added bonus. Next up was Hollow Knight Silk Song. Lots of people have been excited for this game. I have dabbled with Hollow Knight. I have to admit that it's really difficult for me. I had a hard time finding my way around in the game world and I got kind of frustrated with it. But it is a game that I would like to pick up and try to get back into at some point. And I'm de I can definitely see why, why people are excited for this game. This game showed great, looked great, combat was fluid, motion was fluid, animation was superb. And I know that a lot of people have been excited and looking forward to this game. So this is definitely on my positive side of the list. Next up was a game that I don't think anyone saw coming, which is High on Life, which, which is a colorful, comedic first-person shooter, which you don't see many of those today. Uh, this game looked great, looked funny. Uh, it's from the creators of Rick and Morty. So if you're into that kind of humor, you may find this one right up your alley. My favorite part of the trailer was the knife, uh, talking about how you needed to stab something. I thought that was hilarious. Uh, but overall, this game looked and showed well, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there excited for this one, including me. I'll definitely be checking this out. 
and it's also coming to Game Pass, so that's an added bonus as well. Next up, not really games that I'm into per se, but Xbox announced a partnership with Riot Games. This is huge. Uh, they're bringing their games like League of Legends and Valorant and other titles to PC and mobile Game Pass, not coming to consoles, I don't believe. I'm not, like I said, I'm not really a fan of these types of games, but as far as big announcements, this was huge for Microsoft. This is gonna do great things for the numbers of Game Pass, more subscribers. So overall, this goes into the positive column for me. Up next was Plague Tale Requiem, which looks absolutely stunning. This is almost up there on par with games from Sony Studios, in my opinion, like Last of Us, Horizon Zero Dawn. This looks like one of those caliber games that Xbox fans have been hungry for. Um, I really enjoyed the first game. I haven't quite finished it yet. I'm pretty close to beating it. But if you haven't played it yet, it's a fantastic single player game. Beautiful game. Really unique uh, world building with this plague of rats that's terrorizing the countryside. You have to sneak your way around and maneuver around guards and the rat plague threat. Great game. Pick it up. I can't wait to play the sequel. Uh, definitely one to watch out for. And it's coming to Game Pass. So win-win. Next up, we got a pretty in-depth look at Forza Motorsport. Uh, people have been anxiously awaiting this one. This is scheduled to release in early 2023. Dan Greenwalt uh, demonstrated some of the Maple Valley track, which is absolutely stunning. Uh, what can you say about Forza that hasn't already been said? These games look absolutely beautiful. Uh, some people are more into the sim uh, side of things that Motorsport provides uh, in contrast to Forza Horizon and its more arcadey style. I happen to like both equally, I believe. I'm not really the hugest racing fan, but I do love racing games, and Forza is definitely the king of the hill when it comes to racing and sim racing and arcade racing. It just can't be beat. Uh, no one out there is doing racing like Turn 10 or Playground Games. I can't wait to check out Forza Motorsport and see how they've expanded this game and the single player uh, campaign. This is definitely going to be a showcase for the Xbox series of consoles. I can't wait to see ray tracing on these games and see what these consoles are finally capable of. Next, uh, the next few entries kind of bogged the show down a bit, not because it's not things that I didn't think were interesting or cool, but I just didn't feel like they really needed a place on a big showcase like this. They should have probably been saved for the showcase extended, which is going to be dropping today, probably right after I record this video. But we saw that uh, Flight Simulator is getting some DLC, some helicopter DLC, and they're adding the Pelican from Halo, which is pretty cool. Forza Horizon 5 is getting some Hot Wheels DLC, which is going to be an absolute blast. I can't wait to play that. And we finally had a release date for third party uh, console exclusive Scorn, which is going to be coming out October 21st, 2022. So this is one of the few games that Xbox has coming out at the end of this year. It's definitely going to be one to check out, especially if you're not bothered by uh, body horror. This game looks disgusting. HR uh, Geiger inspired art style. Definitely going to be checking this one out uh, when it drops on Game Pass in October. The next game that caught my eye was Flintlock The Siege of Dawn. It's a really cool looking title that I wish I saw more people talking about positively because this game showed great. Uh, beautiful art style, beautiful world. Looks like you have a really cool fox creature companion in this game that tags along with you and distracts enemies and does cool stuff like that. Looks like a solid third person action adventure. I'm not sure if this one's open world or not, uh, but it's coming to Game Pass in 2023. Looks like one to keep an eye on. Next up, we saw Minecraft Legends. Uh, this was a rumored RTS set in the Minecraft universe. I wasn't quite exactly sure what to make of the trailer of this. I love Minecraft. I love Minecraft Dungeons. Definitely going to be checking out Minecraft Legends. I'm, I was kind of hoping for like a, a Populous style game, if you're familiar with that franchise. Not really sure if this is a true RTS or if it has uh, aspects of RTS with some tower defense and building stuff going on in there. It was kind of hard. It was kind of hard to tell what exactly was going on in this trailer and what the gameplay loop is. So I'm definitely excited to see more from this game. And it's Minecraft, so it's obviously going to be a huge hit for Xbox and the Game Pass platform. Up next was possibly uh, 
my runner-up for Game of the Show right behind Starfield. And this is the last case of Benedict Fox. This game looked absolutely incredible. It's a side-scrolling action-adventure puzzler. Uh, has some very Lovecraftian looking vibes going on as you explore this old mansion. Uh, lots of gunplay, saw some knife play in there, some platforming, some puzzle solving. This incredible looking art style and world uh, in this game, absolutely gorgeous. Can't wait to see more from this game and can't wait to play it. And it's coming to Game Pass in 2023. Up next, we saw Grounded. Uh, Grounded is finally getting its 1.0 official release. I've been playing a ton of this game in the early preview version of the game. I absolutely love it. I'm really excited to get in there and experience this game from start to finish and see the entire story and hopefully complete the game. If you haven't played Grounded, do not sleep on this game. This is a fantastic uh, sandbox survival sim that you can play with your friends. Absolutely incredible art style. Uh, nice take on the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids um, storyline there. And yeah, there's really not much more to say. Hopefully when this game drops, more people will get in there and play it. Uh, aside from those that have been checking out in preview, this is game is gonna be a great hit for Obsidian and Game Pass. Next, we saw Diablo 4 and boy, oh boy, did this game look amazing. I'm not really the hugest Diablo fan, but this game looks absolutely stunning. I didn't know that this game was going to be an open world Diablo. I know they've always kind of been a little open. You, know, you could go back and forth to locations, but I think this is a true open world, uh, you know, seamless open world. So that's pretty exciting. The game looks jaw dropping gorgeous. Uh, I really love the necromancer class they showed off and the customization you showed off. Um, one of the things I've always kind of disliked about Diablo is that it didn't let me customize my character very much aside from the armor and stuff that you get later on in the game. Uh, basically what you started with was kind of like a base looking character and then you, you know, tailored them to suit you as you play the game. But this one looks to be expanding on the character creation, which is absolutely fantastic. This is another game coming to Xbox in 2023. No mention of Game Pass just yet. Up next, Sea of Thieves got its long-awaited captaincy update. I'm a huge fan of Sea of Thieves. I play every update that drops in the game. Uh, I really don't play it very often with other people. Uh, occasionally, I will dip in and play with some random crew. But for the most part, I play this game solo a lot. It's a fantastic game. I think more people should give this game a try, even if you're into more uh, solo experiences. I have just a ton of fun exploring in this game. It's one of the few games, aside from Skyrim, that makes me feel like I'm actually on an adventure. But aside from all that, finally getting their captaincy update where you can buy and own a ship, name a ship, customize the ship, down to even the little trinkets that are on your desk and stuff like that. Very exciting update, and I'm sure that's just the surface of what they're adding. Uh, they, they always add so much to these updates when they update the game. Sea of Thieves, one of my favorite games. Can't wait to check out the captaincy update, which is coming very soon. Up next, we saw Cocoon. This is an interesting looking puzzle game from the creators, uh, from one of the creators of Limbo and Inside. Uh, this game is coming to Game Pass in 2023. And if the, the pedigree of the game designer is anything to go off of, this is gonna be a fantastic puzzle experience. Looks interesting, can't wait to see more of this game. Up next, we got a big surprise that Team Ninja is actually going to be working with Xbox again with their new game, Wu Long. Uh, this is a new action title. Didn't really see much in terms of gameplay here or what this game is about, but I'm interested to see more. And it's just great to see Team Ninja working with Xbox again. Phil Spencer actually took the stage here and reassured Xbox fans of their commitment to working with more Japanese developers and then announced that the Persona series is finally coming to Xbox and Game Pass. I've actually never played the Persona series, any of the games, so I'm definitely excited to finally jump in on Game Pass and check these games out, see what all the hype is about. I jumped into Yakuza uh, early last year, so really enjoyed that game, and I'm looking forward to finally getting my hands on Persona. Uh, I think Persona 5 is the first one dropping on the service, so definitely something to keep your eye out for if you've been looking forward to playing those games. Really great to see these games finally come to Xbox. And keeping with the trend of talking about Japanese developers, next, Phil introduced their partnership with Hideo Kojima. At long last, Kojima is finally creating a game for Xbox. He says that he's going to be using the cloud technology that Xbox has, 
And that's really all he said. We don't know anything about the game, um, what it's going to be called. Uh, there are rumblings that it could be called Overdose and that it's a horror title, but we really don't know for sure. So hopefully next year at E3, we will see a cryptic weird trailer from Kojima that he is known for, and we will get the hype train rolling for the partnership with Kojima-san and Xbox. Before we get to my final highlight of the show, which was Starfield, I wanted to mention something that wasn't shown at this showcase, but was actually at Jeff Keighley's uh, Summer Game Fest, and that is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. I've been really excited to play this game. It's coming to Game Pass, and it has six-player co-op. So definitely something to check out. And I think it's coming out this week, if I'm not mistaken, either this week or next week. And finally, we got a deep dive from Todd Howard on Starfield. Finally got to feast our eyes on their next ambitious game. What can I say? I am a huge Bethesda fan. I've seen tons of people talking about how this game looked rough. Uh, I did see some frame rate issues in the early part of the demonstration. But aside from that, this game looks absolutely phenomenal in my opinion. This game is everything that I hoped it was going to be and more. It's Bethesda, open world, huge worlds to explore, over a thousand planets. I'm sure some of them are going to be barren, you know, resource planets where you just land and mine for resources. Uh, but you know that some of them are going to have cities on them, huge explorable areas, uh, starship combat, build your own starship, build your own outposts, hire a crew, hire people to work at the outposts, create your own story, be whatever kind of character you want to be. We even saw character creation where you can pick traits, you can have parents in the game. So much really cool stuff. If you're interested in seeing a deep dive of everything that was in this trailer, or this demonstration rather, I would highly recommend you check out Mr. Matty Plays. He did a video breakdown of this trailer. Be sure to tell him that Ryan sent you uh, just an incredible breakdown of the trailer and he highlights pretty much every detail that you may have missed. So definitely worth checking out if you're interested in Starfield. I've watched the Starfield demonstration in 4K probably about five times now and my hype for this game could not be any more intense. I cannot wait to get my hands on this game. Now that we've went over all the highlights from the show, let's talk about what was missing from this show. Um, what was holding this show back from being a good show to a great or amazing show? I have a list here of everything that was missing from this show that we know about that Xbox is working on and things that we think they might be working on and people were anticipating seeing at this showcase. Uh, we have Indiana Jones. That was MIA. Perfect Dark. State of Decay 3, Fable, Avowed, Outer Worlds 2, Gears 6, Hellblade 2. Where the hell is Hellblade 2? Uh, we, we've seen this game several times now. We've seen gameplay. This game has to be close to being ready to be released. Where is Hellblade 2? Uh, the rumored uh, project from uh, IO Interactive, Project Dragon, was MIA. Uh, Project Midnight, which is supposedly Compulsion Games' next game. Uh, Contraband. I thought for sure Contraband was going to be at this showcase. We've heard rumblings about it for a while. People uh, know what the gameplay is. It's a heist game, an online heist game. I thought for sure this game was going to show up. Uh, we didn't see Everwild again. Um, we did not see a game from In Exile. We didn't see a game from Double Fine. Uh, no death loop for Game Pass, which is a head scratcher. Surely that game has to be close to being released on Xbox. I'm guessing maybe they're going to just drop it with a blog post or something uh, because they can't talk about the game right now because Sony still has rights to it, I'm assuming. Not really sure what's going on with that, but I thought we would see a release date trailer or something. Um, and no mention of any Halo or any Halo DLC, which is strange. I thought for sure we would see something about the next expansion coming to Halo Infinite, but I guess they're saving that for a later date. And here are some things that are rumored that Xbox is working on that we didn't see. Uh, New Killer Instinct was not at the show. Uh, there's a Golden Eye remake supposedly in development. We didn't see that. Uh, Banjo and Kazooie, a remake of Banjo and Kazooie is rumored to be in development. We did not see that. We did not see the Gears collection or the Marcus Phoenix collection that is rumored to be in development. And we did not see the return of 1 versus 100. But maybe it's a positive thing that Xbox has so much in the works that they just had to limit their show to what we saw this week. It's great that they have so many 
cards in play here, but it just would have been really great if they could have just really hammered this showcase home and showed us just one or two huge surprises like a CGI trailer for Banjo and Kazooie you know, breaking their 12-month rule for the showcase, they could have just had, you know, one more thing at the end that would really have surprised and delighted fans of Xbox, and that would really have taken this show to the next level and made it a great or amazing show. You know, I think that's why people really tune in to these showcases. Yes, we wanted to see gameplay of games that are coming soon. That's a given. We want to see that. We don't want to see nothing but CGI trailers, but I think we need to find a little bit of balance and, you know, have all that gameplay, show us the stuff that's coming soon, show us the roadmap like you did, which was great by the way. We got to see a roadmap for the end of 2022 and early 2023. But in the show with a couple of big surprises like a new Killer Instinct CGI trailer, or just show us a, a game we weren't expecting to see uh, and just keep building that momentum. Xbox has great momentum right now and I was really disappointed that they really just didn't nail this showcase and just uh, send it into the stratosphere. Instead, we kind of got a middling show where I'm excited for the future of Xbox and excited for what they're doing. Uh, it's just really disappointing they don't have any big games coming out this year, and they really didn't show us anything else to be super excited about aside from Redfall and Starfield. So those are my thoughts. Let me know what you thought about the showcase in the discussion below. Please give this video a like. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe, share if you haven't already. Thanks for exploring the wonderful world of video games with me. I am Ryan and I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.